Hi, my name is Susan O'Connor and I'm here on behalf of the Smocking Arts Guild of America to share with you the technique of monogramming. I'd like to show you two techniques. The first one is classic white work satin stitch monogramming. So the first step in stitching a monogram is putting the design onto the fabric. And I like to use a friction pen, which is a huge clean and clear. If you can't see the line that you're supposed to be stitching on, it makes it really, really difficult to keep your line of stitching straight. Once the design is on the fabric, you then need to put an edge around it. The stitch that I like to use is split stitch, which is a really, really simple embroidery stitch. It consists of a small straight stitch, and then you just bring the needle up through the centre of the stitch and split it, hence the name split stitch. Work your next stitch exactly the same way. Come up through the centre of that one. Now these, the smaller you make these, the more secure this will be as an edge. This is probably one of the most secure edging stitches because the stitch is held at each end then it's also held in the centre when you go up through it to split it. And this is the edge that the satin stitch is going to be worked over. So this is really a really important part of your stitching. And you can see that if I push that, it's, it doesn't move very much. Unlike a stem stitch or a back stitch, which tend to be a little bit more flexible. If you make a stitch that isn't in the right place, Pull it out and do it again because it won't get better by itself. And if you've got little wobbles in this line of stitching, you're going to have little wobbles in the edges of your satin stitching. So you're just going to keep on going around the line. I'm stitching right on the line. There is another stitch known as split back stitch, which is worked in a similar manner, but when you split the stitch, you go down through it, which makes it a little easier to do. The problem with it is it leaves a lot of thread on the back. This stitch only leaves a very small stitch on the back, whereas split back stitch leaves a very long stitch on the back of the work. So you just keep on going like that until you actually have your whole letter outlined. And you can see again that this makes a really nice firm edge, gives you a very definite line. So if you use something other than a friction pen to put your design onto your fabric and you find that some of it is rubbed away, it's not going to matter because you've got a line of stitching there that's going to be your guide. So that's the outline. The next part of this technique is the padding. It's going to be done with exactly the same thread. Now this thread that I'm using is known as Broda Special or it's also known as Cutwork Thread. It's different from normal embroidery thread in that it's a four ply thread. If I untwist this you can see that there are four very fine plies there which makes it a much rounder thread than stranded cotton and as you stitch with this these plies tend to, tend to untwist and that's what gives you the beautiful satiny surface. This padding technique is really just running stitch. And I'm going to work layers of stitching to build up the height of the padding before the satin stitching is worked over the top. The length of your stitches are going to depend on where you are in the design. You can see here, I can't make a really, really long stitch. I can make a stitch about that long because it, the line is going to curve away. So it's a fairly long stitch on the top, but then you're just going to pick up a couple of threads. Bring the needle to the surface again, and then make your next stitch. And what you're trying to do is to create a layer of thread, or a layer of padding. I find it easier just to work around the edges of my shape 
and then work in towards the center until I've got a complete layer of stitching. And you can see here is a, an ideal place to make a longer stitch. I can make a stitch that long. There's no value in making lots and lots of little short stitches. It will just take you a very long time and make you a little bit crazy. This technique is a little bit like building a house. There's a lot of foundation work going on. You have to work your outline and then you have to work your padding. All of this stitching is going to be concealed by the satin stitching at the end. So you're not going to see any of this. But you need to make sure that you work carefully and precisely. So you can see again I'm going around a curve so I need to make my stitches a little shorter. But then I'm coming into an area where there's a very long straight piece. So I can make a stitch that long there. And you're just going to keep on going until you have the entire surface covered with those stitches, which this has been done here. And you can see I've got a nice solid covering of stitches. You can see where I've gone to the back. Once you've done the first layer, you then need to work another layer of padding. And you're just going to do pretty much the same thing. But instead of going through the fabric, now I'm just going to go underneath those threads that I just laid in and just pick up a little bit of thread. So my needle is not going through the fabric. It's only going through the threads of the first layer. And you can see how I'm building up a second layer of stitches. So all of this thread is really staying on the top of the work. Nothing's going to the back. Rotate your work as you go. You don't want to make it hard for yourself. Embroidery is supposed to be a pleasurable pursuit, not a form of torture. So you're just going to keep on going and then make a second layer of stitching. And you can see here, the second layer of stitching is complete. So I have a much denser coverage than I have here. And I'm starting to get a little bit of height in my stitching as well. So time for the third layer. And again, it's exactly the same thing, but this time, rather than stitching right on top of where I started, I'm going to move in a little bit from the edge because I want my padding to be a mound, not a wall. So I'm moving in a little bit from the edge. I won't be stitching over this row. I'm coming in one stitch. And just doing the same thing, taking the needle underneath the thread that I've got just enough to catch it. It doesn't have to go under a lot of it. It just has to go under enough so that it's caught in place. Once you've done two or three layers of padding, you'll find that the very narrow areas of your letter are looking pretty full. You're going to leave those ones alone and then just focus your additional layers of padding on the areas where the letter is thickest. And you can see on this S, it's through this curve here and also a little bit in these end bits here. So once you've done this third layer of padding, then you're going to keep working in exactly the same way but with each row moving in a little bit but building up more and more layers of padding until you get something that looks a little bit like this. And you can see there's quite a lot of height in this. Once you've finished your padding, it's really important to ensure that the surface of it is smooth.
Your eyes will tell you so much, but your fingers will actually tell you even more. So if you run your fingers over the surface of your stitching, you'll be able to feel if there are any little indentations in your padding that need to be filled before you actually start doing the satin stitching. And that's really important because if you start to satin stitch and all of a sudden you find that there's a little bit where you haven't done as much padding as you should have, you're going to have to take it all out and start it again. So once the padding is complete, you're ready to start the satin stitching. It's really important that you start with a, a, a new clean thread. Don't use a thread that you've been padding with. Get yourself a nice new clean thread and take care not to use lengths of thread that are too long. Limit yourself to around 20 inches or 50 centimetres. If your thread is too long, there's a tendency for this thread to untwist as you stitch if you're right-handed or over-twist if you're left-handed. And by the time you get to the end of a long thread, the surface of the stitches will be very, very different to the, th the new thread that you then start up and you'll get a very, very inconsistent surface in your stitching. When I start a shape like this, and particularly something with a rounded end, rather than beginning at the very end, I like to start a little way in and then stitch back to the end and then come back and continue on. There are different ways of doing satin stitch. Some people like to work it at an angle across the shape. I like to work it at a right angle across the shape. So when I make a stitch, there's always a right angle between the edge of my shape and the path of my thread. That means then as I stitch around something like this, the angle of my stitch is going to change all the time as I follow around the actual shape. So I've brought my thread up just on the outside of the split stitch and then I'm going to take my needle to the back on the opposite side again, just outside the split stitch. If I run the tip of my needle across the fabric, I'll feel it hit that split stitch and then I know that's where I need to push the needle down. Pull the thread through and then tighten it until your stitch is sitting firmly on your padding. If you've done a really nice consistent job of padding your letter, you don't need to worry about tension too much because as soon as you feel it firm to the padding, you know that you're then ready to go on to the next stitch. So I've then brought my needle up right next to my previous stitch, pull through and again. Take the needle down on the opposite side. Now these are the things that people find difficult in working satin stitch. It's the placement of the stitches because what you're trying to do is get a really, really beautiful smooth edge on both sides. I find that the side where I go down into the fabric, I usually get a nicer, smoother edge. So if you choose the edge that is the most obvious edge, which on an S there isn't really an obvious one, because of the way that the letter curves. Make sure that is the edge where you take the needle down to the back. One of the other things that's quite tricky when you're working satin stitch is getting your stitch placement nice and consistent. You don't want the stitches too close together or they, they, they crowd. You don't want them too far apart because then you can get little gaps in between your stitches. If you do work a stitch, and you can see that one that I've just worked, there's a little gap between it and the stitch before it. Don't try and fit another stitch into there. There's not enough space. I find the way to remedy that problem is to then make my next stitch really close to that previous one. And what it does is it pushes it sideways. It just gives it a little nudge sideways and it nudges it into that little space. And it gets rid of that little unwanted space that you had. Again, if you work a stitch that you really can't save, you need to pull it out. 
So I'm just going to keep working to the end here. Don't be afraid to, to actually push your stitches where you want them to be. If a stitch is not sitting exactly where you want it to, make it sit there. So once I get to the end of the shape, I'm then just going to come back to my starting point. and continue working. On a shape that has a lot of curves, like an S, you'll find that an area like this, you need to crowd the stitches on the inside of the curve and space the stitches on the outside of the curve. And that's gonna vary because you can see here, the stitches are spaced on this side, but here they're spaced on that side. So you have to change it all the time. But what you're trying to do is consistently work your stitches at a right angle to the edge of your shape. Once you have completely covered your letter with satin stitching, you then need to do some finishing. And traditionally, this sort of stitching would be washed and then pressed. So I find a pressing pad is really, really valuable when doing this. This one is just made from a layer of wool blanketing or you could use polar fleece and then it has two thickness, thicknesses of cotton flannelette on either side and I've just edged it with a ribbon. The idea of this is that when I finish my satin stitching, I've washed my work, I've dried it, then I put it face down onto my pressing pad and I iron the back of it. The softness of the pad allows the height of the stitching to sink in and it allows me to press the back of my fabric flat so that when I peel the stitching off, I have a lovely, lo smooth monogram. I also have a lovely little indentation in my pressing pad. The other thing you might find that you want to do, if, if your edges aren't 100% as straight as you would like them to be, you can use a, an orange stick or even a fingernail and just go around and push the stitching into where you want it to be. And in that way, you'll find you get a really, really nice smooth edge. Traditionally, in French whitework monogramming, women would use a, the claw of a crab because it was a very, very smooth, highly polished surface to actually polish the surface of their stitching. And also, the washing and the pressing also helps the thread to spread and cover the surface of your work. And that is the finished monogram. Thank you for viewing this video, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that you'll try these techniques.